Getting into the world of prosthetics was always something I really wanted to do. I grew up in the north of England. Um, my father was a manager of a local cinema. I sort of grew up with Star Wars and all the science fiction films of the 70s. I spent a lot of my childhood in my bedroom covering myself in latex, blood and gore. Quite early on, I, I realised I, I wanted to make creatures and monsters. Things out of rubber, basically. So a show like Game of Thrones is kind of like a bucket list. We will actually concept and design the characters. A lot of our crew concentrate on painting. A lot of guys are from a very sculptural sort of background. Hairdressing, definitely an, an artistic process. Whatever the brief is for the character, we have to be practical about things. The artist is going to be able to wear this stuff day in, day out. It's not too heavy. They're going to be able to breathe. So to create a prosthetic makeup and apply it to an actor is very much a team effort. From your sculpting, your mold makers, your people who run silicons, people who put hair onto pieces, you could have a team of 10, 15, 20 people who could do the whole process from start to finish. And then you could have two to five people on the day actually gluing these pieces on. So it's definitely a team effort and it's something I couldn't be responsible for myself. The build of a character would usually start with a life cast, basically making a mould of the actor's head, which we can then make duplicate heads out of. We would then sculpt the makeups and all the forms in a modelling clay all over the head, and then we would make moulds of the modelling clay, basically, on, on the formers of their face. Once we have our mould, the majority of our uh, appliances are made out of silicon rubber, which can be glued to the face, and then the edges can be blend blended away. We might be applying hair, which are usually punched in with a, a very fine needle, all individually. And then we would need to do duplicate sets of prosthetic appliances for every single day that the character films. It's all quite a painstaking process, really, from start to finish. We usually say an average um, kind of build time is about four weeks for a prosthetic character. Our daily process in the uh, prosthetics department would usually have like two, three a.m. calls, get our artists in the chair. The process of gluing them into their prosthetics is usually about two to three hours and the guys would then travel to hair. The moment we start with these guys to the moment they step onto set, it could be five or six hours. And then we would have um, a filming day of say about eight, nine, ten hours, following the artists around all days, prodding them and maintaining the makeup. Then at the end of the day, we then have the de-rigging process, which is, involves us basically peeling the prosthetics off with a brush and mineral oils. And so you can't just rip these things off because it would take a layer of the skin with, with it. And then we would usually be the last out at the end of the day. What makes Game of Thrones so special? I, I don't think I've ever worked on a project that's got such a varied amount of prosthetics and you have such a variety of things to make that it's, it's very rare you'll be on a project and you'll be decapitating somebody the one week and then you'll be doing a full body prosthetic the next week. But the most um, enjoyable memories was probably the end of Hard Home last year. It was very cold, wet, muddy, smoke, snow. We had it all going on. We were covering them in loads of rubber each day. At times it felt like pandemonium and then you just look across and have a look at the monitor and it was so cleverly choreographed and orchestrated you couldn't believe what you were seeing on film was what was right next to you the feeling of achievement was incredible i think that's probably one of the best memories i'll take home so far from game of thrones <laughs>